Let's talk about work and power and how it relates to physics. Now, work and power are you, words that you use in your everyday vocabulary. And for the most part, they correlate very well with the way that you use these words. But there are a couple little exceptions that we need to address um, to where these words don't exactly fall in line with the way that you use them in your everyday life. So let's get into it. Let's first talk about work. Now, work is whenever you apply a force to an object and that object moves a distance in that same direction that you applied the force. So the equation that we would use for work is work equals force times distance. Very simple equation. And the units for work are joules and we represent the joule with a capital J. And there's a couple conditions that um, this type of motion has to satisfy for it to be considered work. First off, it can only be considered work if you apply the force to the object and the object moves in that same direction as the force. So a couple examples would be if you're pushing something, lifting something, dropping something, pulling something, or throwing something, you push the box to the right and the box moves to the right. So that is an example of work. You lift the box up and the box moves up. So that is an example of work. But the exception is when you are carrying something. Now, if you're carrying something, we would typically consider that to be work. But in physics, that is not considered work. And the reason why is because when you pick up an object, that object becomes part of you in a sense. So... Whenever you are carrying that object, you're really doing work on yourself to move that object. So, um, if you're lifting the object, it is considered work. But if you're just carrying it, it's not considered work. So, if you look at this picture here, you'll see that this man on the left here... Sorry, let me get my pen going. This man on the left here, he is applying a force to this box. And the box is moving to the right. So the force is to the right and the box moves to the right. So that is considered work because the force is in the same direction as the movement of the object. But this man over here is carrying the box. And when he's carrying the box, the force is in the upward direction because he's trying to keep the box from falling down. So he applies a force upward and he starts to walk forward. So during that time that he is carrying the box, that is not considered work. But if he had to lift the box up, as he was lifting the box, that was work. But while he's carrying it, it's not work because he's applying a force in the upward direction and he's walking in the right direction. So let's move on. Let's do a little uh, question here. So a stock boy lifts a large carton. 1.5 meters from the floor and then carries it down an aisle that is 15 meters long. When is he doing work on the carton? So the stock boy, is he doing work when he lifts the carton 1.5 meters from the floor? Or is he doing work when he carries it down an aisle that is 15 meters long? Well, the correct answer is He's only doing work when he lifts the carton off the floor. So he lifts the carton up, he's applying a force up, the carton moves up, that's considered work. But whenever he is just holding the object and carrying it down the aisle, that is not considered to be work in physics terms. So let's have a mathy question show up. So a student applies a force of 32 newtons to push a laboratory cart down the hall for 18 meters. How much work does the student do? Well, we know that the equation is work equals force times distance. We got that from, in our, from our earlier slide. And just using the guess method, the force that is applied, I could get that from my question up here, which is 32 newtons. And the distance that is that the object moves is 18 meters, so 18 meters. I can plug my numbers in. Work equals 
32 newtons multiplied by 18 meters. And forgive me for a second, I need to pull out my calculator to solve this. The answer, 32 times 18, is 576. So the work is 576, and the units we use are joules. So the answer to that would be 576 joules of work. So now, let's move on to power. Power is the rate at which you do work. So it's how fast is the work done. And the equation we use for that, uh, for power, is work divided by time. And the units for power are watts. So units is watts. So let's look at a question here. So two people of the same mass climb the same height of stairs. The first person climbs the stairs in 25 seconds. The second person takes 35 seconds. So that's the scenario. The question is, which person does more work? So does the person that climbs the stairs in 25 seconds do more work or the person that climbs the stairs in 35 seconds do more work? Well, remember, work is force multiplied by distance. So... Their force is the same because they have the same mass and they're on the same planet, so their force is the same, which is mass times gravity. And their distance is the same because they're climbing the same flight of stairs. So who does more work? Well, the answer is they both do the same work. Because they have the same mass, so they apply the same force through the same distance. Now... Let's take the same question. Two people, the same mass, climb the same height of stairs. The first person climbs the stairs in 25 seconds. The second person takes 35 seconds. Now, the question is, which person has more power? So, which person has more power? Remember, power is work over time. And we have already found out that they do the same amount of work but which one takes less time to do it? Well, the person who took the less time, the person who took 25 seconds, the first one. So who, who has more power? The first person has more power. He does the work in the shorter time period, so he does the work faster, therefore he has more power. 